I will be forever the myth. You're the king of kings, <laughs> There's always a pecking order. The little peckers never mess with the big peckers. So I'm a rooster, and he's a chicken for the week. All right, welcome back to the Bodybuilding Legends podcast. I have three of my special guests here with me today. We are going to talk about who looks the best from the 70s and 80s of all the mandatory poses. So we've got my friend Jerry Brainham, who used to be a writer for Muscle and Fitness Magazine, and he is here to give us his opinion. How are you doing, Jerry? How are you doing, John? Good to have you with us again. I got Tom Terwilliger, 1986 NPC Nationals champion and IFBB pro. Tom, what was the pro show you won? Uh, it was the Niagara, Niagara. but I, but I want to add this though, because one of your other guests is that if, if it wasn't for, if it wasn't for your other guest, I would have won the 85. The guy, guy it's just like, <laughs> he showed up out of nowhere. And I was hey. like, what? <laughs> kept me awake I had to wait a year. I had to wait a year. going into that show. You kept me awake. I used to think about you all the time. I couldn't even <laughs> sleep at night. <laughs> You too. I actually had a sweatshirt made up that says, I will destroy Phil Williams. Because I wore it on the back of my, sh- it was on my sweatshirt as I trained every day, man. <laughs> it didn't happen. You deserved it. You look great. You look great. But oh, thanks, thanks Tom, for having me on again. I appreciate but like it. Like I said, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have been in that condition because you kept uh, me awake at night. I truly so I pushed that, that much Thank harder. You, I promise you that, buddy. Thank you, man. <laughs> And my other guest, Phil Williams, uh, 1985 MPC Nationals champion and 1988 Chicago Pro winner. So thanks all, thanks to all you guys for joining me. All right. Well, let's get started. We are going to limit our discussion as, you know, the, uh, what our show is all about. We're going to limit our discussion to the 70s and 80s. We're not going to talk about the 90s bodybuilders or beyond. We're just going to stick with the golden age, the 70s and 80s. So let's take the front double bicep pose first. I was thinking along the lines of, of course, Arnold Schwarzenegger looks fantastic in this pose, Robbie Robinson, and Sergio Oliva, and maybe even Boyer Co. What do you guys think? Who's, who would be your choice for the best front double bicep of the golden era? Well, yeah. I think if we had to go from that particular group, I would have to go. I think I, I think I would have to. I know it's going to sound cliche and 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 like kowtowing, but I'd have to go with Schwarzenegger. However, I, I think I would probably have to throw someone else in there who also competed in the later 70s with those same competitors well into the 80s i competed with him in a, in a mr olympia competition which was samir banut who i oh, thought yeah. had a fantastic front double bicep and very complete even as i look at arnold in that front double bicep there are areas you know going by a slightly different standard that just there's some weaknesses in there a little bit his lats might have been a little high samir had a great balance i don't know if he'd win that pose down or not but I have to throw them in the mix for just okay. a little interest. Okay. Also, let me jump in by, you know, just to underscore what Tom just said. If you really look closely at Arnold, let's say Arnold compared to Samir, right? Arnold had this tremendous bicep development. I mean, it was overwhelming. There's no question about it. In fact, when I worked out with Arnold a couple of times, he used to finish his arm workout. He'd go like this, like he just put his arms out like that. <laughs> and, and, I, and, I, and I'd never seen arms that big in that pose. I mean, they were immense, but the thing I remember about Arnold is that if you really look at him carefully, he was bicep dominant. His tricep was good, but not that great. Now, Samir, he had better balance. He had the bicep and the, Samir had tremendous. Am I right, Tom? He great had balance. Tremendous, tremendous tricep development. Yeah, right? tricep. So if you went strictly by the balance you know, of everything, Samir would actually have better arms than Arnold. But of course, Arnold was bigger. So people would uh, right off the bat say, well, Arnold's got the bigger arms, we're getting Arnold's better. But not if you really look at it, if you analyze it carefully. What do you think about that, Phil? Do you agree with that? Yeah, I agree with that. I, I very rarely saw good tricep poses or pictures of Arnold. Right. Now, Samir had beautiful triceps and a you know, full, complete biceps. Like you said, they weren't outstanding or overly large. But yeah, overall, I think he may have had a better arm. That, that's a good point. Now, think about it. How many pictures have you seen of Arnold where he's kind of really highlighting the tricep, like a side tricep? You very rarely see it. Yeah. Biceps, I'm not saying they were weak, but they weren't outstanding compared to his biceps were absolutely outstanding. In fact, biceps dominant. I always tell people when Arnold in between shows, when he was competing, 
and he would just his body would literally disappear. There'd be no delts, no pecs, no thighs. There'd be only two muscles left: the biceps and the calves. That's it. Everything, <laughs> everything else is gone. I'm serious. Everything. But he had this, still have these giant biceps sticking out. Right. <laughs> now I will, I will say this because I want to go back to that list again. I can't remember everyone on the list, but I do remember Boyer Co. Because Boyer when Co. I was coming up as a bodybuilder, I remember Boyer Co. I think he was. I won the world, and Chris Dickerson the same night won the the America. It was something like that. And 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 Jerry, you might remember that better. But but I remember seeing pictures in the magazines of the two, like the two of them, two different contests, same night. And I remember Boyer Co. Even though he was lacking, and and one of the reasons I like Boyer because. I lacked that same midsection structure. I didn't have the classic abdominals like, like Phil has. He was just fantastic abs, man. Um, but those biceps and triceps yeah. on Boyer Co. Now, granted, it's not a complete balanced looking physique up there. But yeah. you talk about arms, man. That guy had some yeah. guns, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. Some of the best. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Even yeah. today. What about Robbie? Because everybody thought, you know, Robbie had the best frontal mobile bicep. I, I, my vote is Robbie first. Okay. Right. 100 percent especially in the 70s robbie i saw that and that just blew me away yeah. as a teenager i saw that and that just blew me away completely yeah. Yeah. i liked arnold but he was six foot one i'm five six and a half so i looked at robbie and i looked at samir and between the two of them i tried to do as much as i could to look like robbie in this way or samir <laughs> as as much as i can i tried to copy that those two physiques yeah so robbie is another guy who had very balanced bicep and tricep and uh his peak, the peak on his bicep was incredible. Also, yeah. tremendous, you know. So Plus, he yeah. had that, that tiny waist and he had the good thigh. So he had that flare here and then the flare on the, on the legs. I mean, uh, his, he, had, he had tremendous and always in shape. Yeah. Always, always looks good. You know, I mean, the only problem with Robbie was, you know, when he competed against Zane, as you know, John, he, for some reason, he kind of lost it. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe two days before the contest, he'd start to get a little bit smooth. It's not that he looked bad, but Zane comes in there looking like a freaking ripped statue. Yeah. And so, you know, he always managed to beat Robbie because of that. You know, if Robbie, everyone who was around and then around at that time, they always say if Robbie would have came in at his 100% best, he would have beaten Zane. And it's hard to say if that's true or not, but I've yeah. heard a lot of people say that. I saw Louis Haney uh, posted a picture of Robbie yesterday. It had to be like from 75, 76. And he was on that muscle rock, you know, where everybody used to pose. Yeah. But man, he, he looked incredible. He has that tiny waist, the flaring yeah. lats, the yeah. great arms, and the great legs. I mean, it was just everything tied in together, you know? Right, right. That's true. Yeah, I think, I, think, I, I think if we put it to a vote using that group, yeah. and I'm glad I threw Samir in there because he certainly deserves to be in there, but I think I have to go with Phil on this one. I think Robbie, overall balance at his best double bicep. Um, what what about Sergio? Um, Would you put Sergio in that group? No. Nah. At his best? No. I I would not. And I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why. Sergio had gigantic arms. There's no question about it. I mean, yeah, they're gonna. <laughs> I, I mean, they used. To, I used to wonder when I when I looked at pictures of Sergio. I used to wonder whether he had a shrunken head. Bicep, Tom. Do you remember that? when he did a double on bicep? His head looked like a pea sometimes. Disappear. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> but but you know. But if you look at again, if you really are objective. And you just look at his arms, he went like kind of like big ham like arms. He didn't have any separation yeah. except rare occasions between the bicep and tricep. Strangely, as he got older later on, after his major victories, he's like, for example, that contest where, where everyone thought they should have won. And uh, was it was it Essen? Uh, you remember the year? Yeah, with his, Essen, Germany. Yeah, Essen. He, actually, he actually did have separation between his bicep, but most of the time, when he flexed the arms, if you look at the photos, they were like big ham-like arms. He didn't have yeah, the he'd right. have, have the de delineation and separation that the other guys, especially a guy like Boyer Cole, like yeah. Tom, this guy had separation everywhere, everywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, bicep, all every possible line and de delineation yeah. was seen. And, and the separate the separation in Bo in Boyer's tricep when he hit that right. shot. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, it's just like, whoa, it's like it stood right. out as much and separated as much as the bicep, which yeah. I always thought was really impressive, really impressive. So I have a question, though, before we really put this to a vote, and maybe we have already. Um, <laughs> are we in, is this primarily 70s? Because there's some guys in the 80s. I mean, if we oh, bring some guys in the 80s. Out yeah. I can't think of any guys in the 80s. Oh, yeah, mention some guys in the 80s. That's true. That's all right. Right. If we pull in the 80s a little bit. Well, well, we, we got, got, we got Lee Haney. Yeah, we got Haney. Lee had Haney great front double bicep. Yeah. You know? 
Uh, and maybe not. I, I still probably would give it to Robbie Robinson, even over yeah. Haney. I so agree. Now. I yeah, agree. Yeah, better arms. Yeah. 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 I, of course, I, you had Mike Christian. You had. Um, and Mike Christian didn't have a bad upfront bicep, but it wasn't great. His lasts were too high, a little too narrow. Yeah. Gary yeah. Stridham's lasts were too narrow for Lita a really great. Yeah. Lita Brada had a great. Brada, you know. Great. Great front double bicep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we had Sean Ray. Sean Ray was in the 80s. Uh, yeah. Bill Hill was in the 80s. Oh right. Nope. Bill, Hill, he was an early, Bill Hill was an early monster. I remember him. Yeah. I, I became friends with Bill Hill. Uh, you know, and uh, I remember, well, I think it might have been the Nationals one year. I, he, uh, I was in his hotel room. He wanted to watch me. Or, well, he wanted me to look at his posing routine. And I'm looking at this guy. I'm thinking, my God, this guy's huge. Yeah, right? he, he was, was thick. He, he was unbelievable. Heck. He had these gigantic thighs, Bill. You, you, you got to see him. I mean, you. I remember that. Yeah. This guy reminded me uh, uh, almost like a precursor for uh, Paul Dillette. He was like an early, like a, yeah. he's like one of the really thick guys. And, and Paul took it to a whole different level, Dillette. You know, but we're not talking oh, about the 90s. Yeah. So I, can't, I can't talk about Paul. <laughs> <laughs> I remember one thing about Phil, and if you noticed this, he was very narrow shouldered considering yeah, the size that he had. Yeah. Do you remember that, Jerry? Yeah. That's true. That's yeah, that's very true. narrow clavicles. Right. Yeah. That's very true. And I think that's what held him back, to tell you the truth, because the thickness was, way above anyone i mean i i think i was there when he won the night of the champions very thick at that yeah. time no one was that thick you didn't that Nobody was thick. he was he definitely set a new standard for that for that absolutely again, yeah and he was right and that absolutely. narrow shoulder thing held him back a little right. bit he had, you know, had vascularity and veins everywhere i mean the guy looked I, and you know what i'll tell you a, a funny story quickly about phil years later I, I was in new york again to cover the night of the champions i think it was the uh, late 90s or something and uh, I ran into Phil in a restaurant, Phil Hill, and he came up to me. He said, Jerry, he says, you know, I'm having a problem. I said, what's going on, Phil? He said, I want to go back, you know, and compete, but I just can't get in shape anymore. He says, I can't, I just can't get that level of, you know, that I had before. And uh, he says, I think it's because, you know, I think it's because I stayed on the drugs too long, mm. you know, and, and I don't respond to them anymore. So mm. I said, well, that's very possible, Phil. I said, the only thing I can tell you is lay off them for a while, just train naturally, and then maybe when you go on them again, they'll work. And I never spoke to him afterwards, and he never competed again, so I don't know what happened to him. But well, you yeah. Yeah. Jerry. What? Phil was interested well, was when, when I was, I'm sorry, John. Um, when, I, when I was doing uh, Muscle Sport USA, we did the interview the year, the year of the Nationals. Did he, did he, he won the heavyweight. Right. Did Sean Ray win the overall? Sean beat him. Yes. The overall, he won yeah. the overall. He did. Okay. Because I remember, I remember interviewing um, Phil, and I thought he said he said something interesting. I said, "So what's in the future for Phil?" He said, "Well, I'm going to take my, my pro career as far as I can. I'm 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 aiming for the Olympia. I want to win the Olympia." And I said, "What's beyond that? What's beyond a bodybuilding career?" He goes, "I want to become the mayor of Trenton, New Jersey. I remember I that. Make a I difference that in too. Yeah. This was his goal. This was his bigger goal. Was politics." Yeah. I, didn't I don't know, know if he ever got there or not, but uh, I who knows? Know you know, Phil was a well-spoken guy when you spoke to him. He sounded like an intelligent guy. Very. I, 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 I could see him. I mean, look, look at what Arnold did. <laughs> Governor mm -hmm. of California, you know what I mean? I yeah. mean, I, I could see him going into politics. You know, he, he, he was very well-spoken, Phil. And, and, he knew, and he knew how to play it up, too. He would wear, everybody else was wearing, you know, the typical gym wear, warm-up wear after the contest during the interview. He had a cardigan on and the big, thick black glasses. Yeah, I remember the glasses. Yeah. Like, you look like you could be the mayor. I don't know, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. The last I heard of him, that he was working as a guard in a prison somewhere. And I don't remember where I heard that, but that was so many years ago. I can't remember uh, who told me. Mm. Uh, mm. So I don't know if that's true or not, but that was the last I've heard of him. Uh, what about Vince Taylor? Vince Taylor had a great front double bicep. He did. It's Taylor. It's Taylor. Uh, absolutely. Incredible arms. Yeah. yeah great Incredible arms. arms. You know, I, I, I'll tell you a quick story about Vince. Uh, uh, when I met him, he had just come over from Germany. He was living in Germany and he was a protege of John Brown. Uh, mm -hmm. just oh, yeah. Remember John Brown? John yeah. Brown basically saw him. And I guess uh, Vince was originally from Maryland somewhere. And uh, he ran into John Brown, and John Brown convinced him, you know, to go into, he saw the natural ability of uh, Vince. And, you know, so he'd come over to compete in the Nationals. And I was, again, working for Weeder, and I interviewed me and Julian Schmidt. We interviewed uh, Vince Taylor, and the guy was tremendous. He had a fantastic physique. 
and he, and he says to me and Julian, he says, you know, I said, what do you, I just like you, you just like you asked Tom, I said to him, well, what's up for you? What's up the line for you, Vince and Body Bone? I mean, you're going to turn pro and this and that? He says, you know, I'm not good enough to be a pro. I said, what? He says, <laughs> I just, I'm just not as good as these other guys. I, I you know, I, I just can't, I can't, I don't see myself ever beating him. I never, I never forgot that. I think it, I know, you know, he, I know. He, he wound up competing in God knows how many pro shows. He thought he oh. was not good enough to be even on the stage with these guys. Oh, dude, dude, he pissed everyone off. And I guess it was 91 Grand Prix post Olympia. And we were all, you know, it was like seven countries in two weeks. It was, we were, it was nuts. And everybody was like trying to stay in shape, yeah. you know, and, and it was him and um, Sonny Schmidt, first right. and second for the first three, four shows. Yeah. Well, then Sonny got a hold of some illicit, you know, some stuff. And, <laughs> and he went downhill <laughs> fast. Yeah. But this would piss everybody off because literally he was, in, he was like in incredible shape. And he would get on the bus. We had to take a bus from one country to the, to the other overnight sometimes. And he would get on the bus with two, three pieces of pizza, slices of pizza. Well, so? like, I mean, yeah. anywhere he could get pizza, and it didn't matter if we were in Italy, Germany. He came on the bus with pizza. I think he did it to taunt the rest of us, man. <laughs> <laughs> Son of a bitch, a man. Good. We're all eating broccoli. Oh, man. <laughs> wow, that reminds me of, of uh, Eduardo. Remember Eduardo Kowak, guys? You remember? Oh, yeah. Oh, of course. I, I liked Eduardo. What a I great was, guy. I was on one of those same. Busy. I was I was covering one of those same Grand Prix tours that you were just talking about, Tom. We were in Essen, Germany again. Essen, Germany. Mm -hmm. I, I became good friends with Eduardo Kawak. You know, he brought me to his gym in Nice and all that. But you know, we were hanging out in the hotel one night, and he said to me, "Let's get something to eat." So we we go in uh, to a the only thing we find open was a kind of McDonald's type restaurant. Now remember, the contest was the next day, right? He orders like a bunch of cheeseburgers and fries, and I said, Eduardo. Should you be eating this stuff? You got a concert tomorrow morning. I mean, I mean, he was just loading up on all this crap. And, you know? and I and I said to him, I said, "Oh my God, he's going to look like crap at the contest." And I, you know, at the contest, the guy looks fantastic. I mean, you, no water retention, nothing. Those crazy deep abs. Remember those abs he had? Oh my yeah. God, the yeah. abs! And you I, know what? No I forgot one forgot to mention him. I'll mention him in that with Robbie. Okay. Marta Kowak had a great front double bicep. He really did, yeah, didn't yeah. he? Great arms. Great biceps. Great arms. Incredible yeah. arms. And, and like you, Phil, he was one of the few guys that could actually, you could, you could like he had abs in his front double bicep. Oh, he was stretched I remember out. your front yeah. double bicep, Phil. You're like, I'm like, the freaking guy's got his rib cage up and he's still got these deep abs. How is it possible? <laughs> and Kowak yeah. used to do the same thing. We had the same exact look, man. It was, yeah. he, he had a definitely great. Great body, great body. The 88 Olympia was his the best condition I've ever seen him, and he didn't place in the top six. No, you got, you got, you got. What? How can that? What? How yeah. you know, Eduardo had a, and if you think about it, this guy had one of Phil. This guy had one of the most complete physiques. Yes, he sir. Weak points. He, he had, had no weak, weak points. points. Huh? He had arms, no weak points. Legs, calves, every. How did this guy not do better? I can never figure that out. You know, to me, he had a great physique. You know. What about yeah, Lance Strayer? Yeah, he had too much Lance hair. Oh, Lance Strayer. Sure. Well, you mentioned him. He had gigantic arms. Good front double bicep, right? Very, very good yeah. double bicep. Kind of wide waist, though. A little bit of wide waist. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, Lance's problem was he was a little too blocky. Yeah. He was he said, thick in the waist. But arm size and, and, and mass, tremendous. Tremendous. Yeah. 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 But I, I'll tell you, I think, I think, doesn't Lance have a PhD? I mean, he's. He calls him. Last time I met with him, it was at the. Yeah some uh, some hall of fame event i was at yeah and uh and man that guy he is one smart dude yeah and yeah i think he went all the way with his phd so based on that we might have to give him best double bicep <laughs> <laughs> smartest we'll give well, him the smartest front double bicep let's, I'll call, tell you. Hey, Tom, let's call him most knowledgeable bicep most knowledgeable <laughs> i like it a special category we're creating a special category for lance yeah. Breyer. here's a guy i want to mention i forgot about to me mike mincer Oh yeah. yeah, tremendous front double bicep with that vacuum. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's true. He had a great vacuum. He oh. did. He did. Yeah. Right. Oh my god. You know, Mike had a very small looking waist, didn't he? When a front double bicep, he was small hips. Him. He had small hips. Yeah, small hips. Yeah. Yeah. Really is. Uh, I remember the, the eighty Olympia where he was like standing to Arnold. He made Arnold look like he had a really thick waist because mm -hmm. Mike just looked about two, three inches smaller than Arnold. Of yeah. course, he was shorter too, but still, you know. Yeah. 
Well, that's the interesting thing, John. See, I, I, it's, it, it's, and as I'm looking back now, just in my mind, of, of Mike Mentor's physique in that front double bicep, it was like a small waist. I thought he had big hips. It was like his waist came down and his hips. Maybe he had down. a small waist and big hips. You're right. He had wide hips for right. a small waist. Right. Yeah, wide hips. Yeah. That's, no, you're right, Tom. You're right. Yeah. I've noticed that. And they said, well, he has wide hips. They said this years ago. And I said, well, he has a small waist, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they said, oh, well, his hips are still wide. I'm thinking, if your waist is small. Who cares? Yeah. You know? Right. But it did right. seem to throw the symmetry a little bit, somehow or other. Little, just, yeah. And then, you know, he wore those big, thick, velvety trunks that didn't help. Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> he, had, he had a great vacuum, though. I remember, like, when he would come out and do his pose routine, I saw some videos of him. And when he would come out with those arms stretched out or the front double bicep, it was like, ooh, you put you back in your seat, you know, because he had yeah, that yeah. vacuum and he had the huge arms. The, the there were a few guys back then that could do an overhead vacuum along with Frank yeah. Zane and yeah. Tony yeah. Pearson. And there were a few others who had that tremendous yeah. overhead yeah. vacuum. And yeah, I used to look at that and go, oh, what does it take yeah. to do that? Oh, I know. And I just... One, I one, of, one of my buddies, you guys all know, and of course he was a, a, a great 80s bodybuilder himself. I know who you're talking That's about, John Defendus. John Defendus, yeah. exactly. Great yeah. vacuum. One of the best. One of the, one best. Of the best I've ever seen. Right. Yeah. You know, the funny thing is the vacuum is coming back today in the so-called classic men's mm -hmm. company. And you don't see it in any of the pros. <laughs> none, none, none of the guys, <laughs> none of them do a vacuum. They can't, not, not one, not one can do a vacuum. Right? The classic, it's almost becoming like a style, you know, to show that. Yeah, hey, yeah, look, yeah. I can do a vacuum. Like this guy who won, whose name I always forget, the guy who just won again, the uh, classic. Uh, yeah, you know, the big tall Chris guy. Bumstead. What's his name? Chris Bumstead. Is that? Uh, Bumstead. Uh, Bumstead. Yeah, Bumstead. Yeah. He, and that's one of his, and every time he does a double bicep, he does the vacuum every yeah. single time if you look at it. You Which know. is interesting because when you think about classic bodybuilding and you, you, talk, you talk about the workouts, every classic bodybuilder from, from day one practically included heavy pullovers. pullovers we were yeah. expanding the rib cage, right? We yeah. wanted to create a bigger torso. John, yeah. you got, you've had one of the big, I never saw you do a vacuum. But you got like one of the biggest rib cages, man. Yeah. You must have been doing a lot of those pullovers. Well, I, I did those pullovers from 14 years old. I think that's, mm -hmm. that's what I did it. I don't know if they're doing them today. It seems like no. it's an exercise that's that's kind of forgotten. They no, did the thing forgotten. with the um with the rope. They pull the rope, yes. down, but they don't do a pullover with the dumbbell. Yeah, but then again, how many other guys today really can do a re a great you know chest pose like Arnold used to do in those mm, guys? Yeah, we're gonna get to that side chest. Yeah, that's a, that's a forgotten pose. Yeah, you don't, you don't see many guys today who look. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, Phil Heath does one, but all you see is his arms and shoulders. It's the you know, arms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you know yeah. it's. It's not like the old days when the guys had these gigantic, like Reg Park, all these gigantic rib bars. Big rib cage. Yeah, it looks so impressive. Yeah. yeah you know. How well, let's vote. Let's, vote. let's, let's <laughs> vote on the front double bicep. Okay. All right. So, Phil, you're going with uh, Robbie then, right? Uh, uh, number one, okay. my opinion. Number one. Yeah. I'll go with how about, that. How about you, Tom? Going with, you going with Robbie too? I mean, we, we really threw a lot of guys in, in the mix, but I think yeah. as a whole, Robbie Robinson, man. The tiny waist, the incredible arms, yeah. great lats. Yeah. All right. What about you, Jerry? I'm going to go with, uh, you know, I, I, it looks like I'm kissing Nancy, but I have to agree with the other guys. I'm going to go with Robbie. Okay. Yeah, yeah you know, because again, I, I'm looking at the, uh, like, almost like from a medical point, I'm looking at the, the balance. Yeah. Well, the beautiful balance between the bicep and tricep. I mean, half of me wants to give it to Arnold because Arnold had this just tremendous double arm bicep. But yeah. it didn't have the balance between bicep and tricep that Robbie has. Right. Yeah. I have to give it to Robbie for that reason. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm, gonna, John? You get I'm, gonna go, I'm gonna go with Arnold. I'm a big Arnold fan, but <laughs> I, I'm thinking of that. Um, I think it was the 70 Naba Universe. There was a black and white photo of him doing a front double bicep. And he's got the big rib cage, he's got the great arms, he's got the lats, and his legs looked really good then too. Mm. So I mean, just I used to look at that pose all the time, that picture all the time when I was growing up, you know, trying to develop my physique. So uh, I'm, it's I'm hard I'm, not to be. I'm, an Arnold fan. I'm gonna go with Arnold. <laughs> so, but it looks like Robbie won that one. Three you to one. Got it. Okay. I'm making notes here. <laughs> all right, let's uh, let's go with the front lat spread. The three guys I was thinking of, and you guys can we can jump in, throw in some more guys. Franco, Franco Colombo. Which yeah. which pose is this one? Front lat spread. Front lat. Front lat spread. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Robbie Robinson again, and Lee Haney, 70s and 80s. I think those three are pretty standout. I, I, I throw in Freddie Ortez again. Give okay. 
Did he see his lat spread? It was gigantic. Yeah, it was. Especially Small from the waist. back. He would do this thing where he kind of pulling his waist. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. And, and it looked like he had like a 20 inch waist. You know, when he gets lat <laughs> yeah, he would so collapse, he would collapse his wrist, right? When he did exactly, it. Right, right, right. Yeah. And he had to defend this lat spread, Freddie. Yeah. You know, but but uh I I I'd have to throw in the him. You could probably throw in uh, Phil Williams too. Phil well, Williams. Sure. I've got another candidate. What's that? Brian Buchanan. Oh my god. Oh yeah. Oh I forgot fact, about okay. Brian. He made me look like a little kid. You know what? <laughs> hey, hey, hey. hey, you know what, Phil? I, I'm going to cast my vote right now. I'm going. I'm going with with uh, with the uh, Brian. Brian Buchanan. Brian Buchanan. Yeah. Buchanan. Because I saw yeah. that person. I saw that guy in person many times, and uh, you know he did that pose right in front of me. And I remember saying to him in Gold's gym once. You know, I said, you know, Brian, if I had a waist as small as you, I'd never wear a shirt in the gym. <laughs> hey, yeah. His waist was smaller, and I'm not exaggerating, yeah. than most of the women. I'm talking normal size women and go, his waist was so freaking. And this is why yeah. I freaked out, Phil. I saw a photo of him online. Maybe you guys saw it too. A photo taken maybe within the last two years or so. He's a big fat guy now. Oh, beast. Yeah. He's a beast in the photo. I saw I, that photo. That's hard, hard to believe. That's unbelievable. I, I saw that. And you know what? It was his face. Right, right. From the neck down. Yeah. Now, but you see, the thing is, this is a guy that I never would have imagined. You know, you know, some guys gain weight when they stop competing or whatever, you know, get a little thick around the waist, or whatever. But I his waist was so small, I could never imagine this guy ever being obese. But he told me something once, which kind of gave it away. I said to him, Brian, you, you must have this, this waist you have, it's got to be genetic. I've never seen any normal sized man with a waist your size. I said, your parents must have had very small waist, right? He said, they were short and fat, Jerry. That's what he told me. Short and fat. Mom might, mom might have had a visit from the milkman. It's possible. I don't, I just, it doesn't sound right to me. The milkman with the tiny waist. <laughs> but I will, I will tell you this. When I, was, when, when I was competing in Rimini, Italy, Italy for the Olympia in 89, uh, we were, you know, my training partner and I were there. And it was a day or two before, and we're like looking for a place to get some food where we can bring back to the hotel. You know, you can't go out. You got to bring stuff back to the hotel. So we're like rummaging through this little shop. And then walks Brian Buchanan in a tank top. I looked at my training part. I'm like, let's just fucking go get some, let's just get some pastries. <laughs> it's, it's over. It's over. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm going to be standing next to this guy. <laughs> you, see, you see the thing about crazy, about man thing about Brian that really made, made the front lat spread look so great was the small waist. Yeah. Not, oh, sure. You know, it's, it's not that he didn't have a good lat spread or anything like that, but the tiny waist made his lats look just, it looked like he could fly away with those freaking things. I'm we sorry. probably could have put him in the front double bicep pose too, right? You know, we yeah. made, uh, yes, yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. And he might have beat really Robbie. That was a freaky He, he might have beat Robbie in that. Yeah. Too late, no going back. <laughs> yeah, we, do it again. <laughs> we spent we spent forty five minutes. We can't go back. <laughs> you know the thing I remember about Brian also is that this guy did not take losing very well. He was a very bad mm. loser. Oh I mean, really? When he held the Olympia in L.A., remember that? What, what, what was that? Eighty eight. Eighty eight. Eighty eight. We were there together, yeah, Jerry, yeah. you and I. That's right. That's right. But I re I remember talking to Brian. Uh, after the contest, and he was very sarcastic a lot of times too. Like at that contest, he came up to me and the guy knew me, we were kind of friends. And he says to me, Jerry, when are you going to start training? He said in front of a bunch of people, you know, which trying to embarrass me. I don't know. Yeah. I, you know, nice. I, you know, so I, I had a good comeback. I, I said to him, well, as soon as you get calves, Brian, you know, and he, oh, oh, there you go. <laughs> that hit him right between the legs, man. <laughs> <laughs> he's drawing he's he stopped him right in the butt, right? But, but I remember after the contest, I spoke to him again, and he was freaking so angry. He thought he should have won. He said, the guy said, he says, says, no, I don't, John, I don't remember what he placed in that show, but I didn't be here. He was eighth. Oh, okay. Yeah. Eighth, he was, right. He was eighth. eighth. Okay. Yeah. And he thought he should have been in at least the top five, he told me. He says, I don't know what's wrong with these guys. I mean, and he, and he mentioned some of the other guys in the show that he should have been, but he was furious. I mean, the mm. guy, he says, you know, I'm ready to quit this whole thing. He said, and that really, uh -huh. that's what he told me. He was very mad. 
I, I had the videotape of that 88 Olympia and it shows the prejudging at the beginning and they were calling three guys up at a time to be compared. And he was called up a few times, like with Gaspari and I think Labrada. So he was being compared to the top guys. Right. Phil, were you in that? Were you in the 88? Oh, no, I, 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 st- I bowed down okay. two weeks before the show. Because I'd won the Chicago three weeks before and then right. couldn't hold up, couldn't maintain the condition. And I was just uh, Oh, three exhausted. weeks. Yeah, that's, that's a tough one to yeah. hold, man. No question. Yeah. A week, two weeks. Yeah. It's okay. A week, it, but, yeah. maybe, but three weeks. Yeah, that was too much. That's tough, man. Yeah, I agree. What about what about Lee Haney in that post? Uh, Front last spread, one of the best, one yeah. of the best on the planet. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, it's like I said earlier. I believe with Lee Haney, a great bodybuilder overall, but the thing that made it really made him win the Olympia, I believe it's eight times. Am I right? Yes. Was was I think more than anything else was his back development, both front and rear. Mm-hmm. He just had tremendous uh, back, you know, uh, back detail, and he had a tremendous lat spread from the front, and it just overwhelmed everybody. I'm going to tell a- you something funny, Jerry. Right. You'll re- you remember this. We were looking at guys from the front and the rear, but when they turned to the side, Lee was the only one who had development from the side. His thickness matched right. his width, right, and no one else's did. That's yeah. true. That's very true. Yeah, I'm, lo- I'm looking at a picture. I can't share the screen, but I'm looking at a picture of Lee Haney. It was taken, you know, you guys have seen this one, tra- taken probably in front of better bodies in Manhattan, on the streets of Manhattan, the, the steam sure. coming out of the, like, yeah, the steam. He's, got his ge- he's got his jeans on, and it yes. is just yeah, you can't incredible that. front last break. One of the greatest, uh, yeah, one of the greatest bodybuilding pictures ever, I think. Great yeah. pick, great yeah, that, picture. That, so. that, that picture called an iconic picture for sure. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. and, and Robbie looked amazing in that pose because he had that tiny waist too in the big mm-hmm. glass. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah. I would what, say Robbie, what about, the three uh, of those guys. The three of those guys have you got Robbie, you have got Brian, and you got Lee. Three of the best about, front lat spreads in the in the business that I can that I know of. What about Frank? Can we Frank? Frank? It, it could be from the back. I would say he could beat all of them. Yeah, right. yeah. But from the front, I don't. I don't think so. Okay. I agree with Paul about that. There was something about it from the front. Maybe it's because his, his, you know, his his pecs were, and, and you know, it was so overpowering. I'm not sure. Yeah. It almost, it almost like it it kind of hit his lat spread. But when he turned to the uh, rear, do you remember that scene in Pumping Iron where where Franco's posing on stage and yeah. Danny Padilla is sitting in the audience? Yeah. And Franco's doing a a, a a rear lat spread, and Padilla goes. Holy shit! I I can't you know Padilla was like startled. He was unbelievable. Franco, remember that scene? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very much so. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. very much so. Yeah. So who was on the list again? So we got Lee Haney, we got Brian Buchanan, who else? Robbie. Robbie Robinson, right? Franco Colombo. Yeah. Is there anyone else? Schwarzenegger couldn't. I don't know. I mean, he's not really in the top five. I think. Not not in that pose. No. Not in that pose. I agree. That was. Was, Arnold was pretty passable, but I wouldn't I wouldn't say he's a standout. Uh, yeah. And even and even another great Serge Dubray didn't have Serge Dubray. We haven't even oh, talked about him. That's he didn't have the. He, it was a good last spread, but it wasn't yeah. the greatest last spread. What about Sergio? You think Sergio would be on that list? He was so thick and he was wide. And he had a tiny waist. I'm trying to remember a picture of him in the last spread. I know I've seen one. Yeah. If you look at the but picture, it's like not coming to mind. When he's on the front, the, the yeah. essence shot, he's doing yeah. the front lat spread, you know, the black and white. Yes. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I would include him. Looking at that picture, I would go, oh, shit, who is? I've yeah. never seen anything like that before. Yeah, yeah. I can look at that picture today and get as, as excited about it as I did when I was 17 or yeah. 16, right? Mm. Phil, Phil, isn't that amazing? I'm the same way. Like, when I see an old body movie picture, especially one I haven't seen before, I feel like I'm 14 years old again. I get, oh, all sure. <laughs> get all over again. <laughs> right. That's Absolutely. We're all we're all from about the same generation, the same uh, era. Yeah. Did you guys also have like a stack of magazines or like up? Yeah. I had like a oh, stack yeah. of magazines <laughs> yeah. coming up. It was about here. It was like they were class. It was like I every night, every day. That was what yeah. I would look at and read. Right. You know. Absolutely. You know the thing about Sergio though that I think we'll all agree on. Nobody ever in bodybuilding history. Topped him when he when he went like this. No, right. Right. I mean, did, you, did you ever see lats that big with the arms overhead? Yeah. I, I showed that picture to Arnold, and then uh, uh, it was when, when uh, I think it was when Sergio won the Olympia in '69. I got an issue of talk about magazine. I had uh, the issue of Iron Man had just come out, 
and they had a picture of, of Sergio winning that show in that famous signature yeah. pose. And Arnold and I were working out at Vince's gym, man. And I showed the magazine to Arnold. And I, met, and I, I I'll always remember what he said. He said, nobody will ever beat this guy. This is Arnold talking about Sergio. Uh, <laughs> he, he was so startled by that picture. It's jaw drop. He just couldn't believe. He said, how can a guy's lats look that big with his arms overhead like that? He was like mm -hmm. startled, startled yeah. by it, you know. Yeah. Of course, Arnold wound up beating him, but that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, we're going to vote. Jerry, what do you think? Who's, who's your choice? I'm going to have to go with Brian Buchanan, you know, because yeah. uh, just freakishly small, that, that the lats look like they could go on forever, you know. But but uh, that's a tough one because the other guys are right up there too. But I, I'd have to give a slight edge to Brian Buchanan. Okay. What about you, Tom? I'm going to go with Lee Haney on this one. All right. He's a little bit, you know, he's in the same generation, the same era as, uh, as Brian. You know, and a lot of those other guys were competing with him, but I'm gonna have to give it to Lee Haney. I'm looking at that picture still, I'm just like, yeah, 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 it's, it's one of the best. Yeah, Phil, what do you think? Uh, as far as a classic look, I'm gonna go with Haney, but as far as a freakish look, I'm gonna go with Brian. Okay, Brian's picture the first time I saw a picture of him, this kid from England who was a workout partner, man, he showed it to me. I said, That's not a real photo. I said, Somebody <laughs> took scissors. No, I, I told him this. I said, someone took scissors and cut that out. And he goes, no, this is a real photo. I said, well, who is he? He told me who he was. And I said, well, how old is he? He said he's 19. And this was <laughs> Mr. Britain. He took second to Mr. Britain when he was 19. He oh, should have won. The guy that beat him should have never taken third. Yeah. And when I saw that, I almost, I almost wanted to go home. I wanted to go back to Kansas City. <laughs> and we were, we were in Santa Monica, well, Venice at that time. I just saw that and I just think it, it I've never looked that good. You know, it's, <laughs> you know what's funny, guys? It kind of reminds me of what you're saying, Phil, about, you know, that you didn't believe the photo. Uh, you, you, you know, Betty Weeder, Joe's wife? They, they, <laughs> you know what I'm about to say? That. <laughs> they used to take photos of Betty Weeder, right? This is before they had computers in Photoshop, right? And Betty, had, she had this small waist anyway, right? But Joe would want the people up in the Weeder office to make her waist look even smaller so they would take, like, white paint or something wow <laughs> <Why not? laughs> i remember that <laughs> the funny thing was it would show up in the photos you can see the paint that they you know that oh, whatever it was. Oh, really <laughs> it's hilarious to see that but, oh, it, but it was so unnecessary because this woman literally had a wasp weight she had a very small mm -hmm. waist but yeah. i don't know what joe insisted on i don't know what the deal was it, it did look freakishly small in those pictures didn't it yeah yeah, so, yeah. john what do you think this could I'm be gonna a go with I'm gonna go with Haney. Haney, uh, all right. That was just a standout pose for him in all the Olympias, you know. And then that one picture, Tom, like you said, that was a crazy picture. Yeah. He had the he had the combination of that thickness, the chest, the shoulders, the lats were incredible, and then he had that tiny waist. So, right. yeah. So Phil, you going you going with Haney or uh, or Brian? McKinney? I, 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 like I said, they're different. Yeah. But they're both <laughs> two of the best. So I, I'm I'm gonna say. Uh, I'm going to go with the freak factor and say Brian. Okay. Ooh. I'll, I'll go that way. We got a tie, right? That ties it. You know? yeah. yeah. All right. Let's go to uh, side chest. So three guys I wrote down was, of course, Arnold, one of the greatest side chest ever. Uh, Lee Haney again. And I was thinking also Lou Ferrigno. I'm, I'm I'll go, go with Arnold. I go with Arnold too, right off the bat. Arnold was tremendous in that pose. Anybody else in contention? Any other guys I didn't mention? Got to be some other somebody else in there. Sure, I think yeah. Robbie had a great side chest. Because you remember the Serratus and yeah, the way he was the one that. I think Robbie was the first one to do it differently, right? He was the one to crunch, yes, punch exactly. down. Exactly. No, everybody. That, that sticks out in my mind. It's not the you know most massive, but I mean, as far as classic and beauty, yeah, I'm gonna throw that in there. Okay. Yeah, I tell you, I'm gonna have to. Uh, this is another stretch, but this is one of my favorite physiques. Um, and he came up through the 70s and uh, really uh, shined in the 80s quite a bit. Was um, uh, Ben Fato, Frances, Francis, oh, Fr ben Francis Benfato? Francis yeah. Benfato, sure. Uh, the, the guy had, I mean, just from the, the side chest, just the separation and the aesthetics, the lines, yeah, great yeah, arms. Beautiful physique. In fact, yeah. his front double biceps should have been up there as well. You I know? forgot about him. Yeah, yeah, I forgot about him. Yeah, I love his side chest. Love you it. know, 
Hmm. But, Bono, but Bono is still in great shape today. He's still in great shape, but Bono. Yes. So, in some ways, he he looks even better than he did years ago. He's a little mm-hmm. bit. You know, it's in fact, he got bigger, didn't he? he got thicker. He actually, did. he's bigger. Yeah, than for a while he got real big. Yeah, he's he's gone completely opposite of most guys. I don't know. Mm-hmm. He, he contacted me a while back, and he told me he had this special system, and I told him to write. You know, let me know what it is, and I'll write it up. But he never got back to me, so hmm. I don't know what it was. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. What about Gary Strynum? He had a good side chest. He was a big he did. guy. Indeed. Yeah, yeah Gary had a great real thick, chest. Real thick chest. He had good delts. Yeah, beautiful pecs, delts. Yeah. Traps. Yeah. His side chest was interesting, though, because he didn't have a big rib cage. No. Yeah. No, it was a different, not. like you said, it was a little bit closer to what Robbie did. Robbie Serratus, though. I mean, he just came that was that. that was, yes. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Lee Labrada had a great side chest. Yes. There's mm-hmm. another one. No. You know, Those I'm picking all the small. Like, they're all a little shorter than me. I like that. <laughs> you know you yourself had a tremendous side chest shot thank you, thank you. it was excellent seriously i've right? got i've got uh something hanging over here it's yeah i see it yeah. <laughs> my wife made me put that up <laughs> you helped you hang it up there <laughs> tommy you have also had one of the best front double biceps yeah you had a great front double you had a great front double bicep you had the shoulder to width differential and yeah. the thigh sweep from the front. You had the calves. Yeah. That was incredible. That's very yeah, complimentary. I wouldn't. I certainly wouldn't put myself in in uh, in top five contention. But thank you. I appreciate that. When we no. get to best back biceps, Phil, I'm gonna be all <laughs> over it, man. <laughs> My vote. <laughs> thank you, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> Seriously, jeez. So, what about Ferrigno when he was? Um... Not just the seventies, but like uh, remember in the eighties when he was doing the Hercules movies and he had the oh, he was in shape. Yeah, not, not the nineties when he made his comeback, but in the eighties he got real big. Remember when he did the Hercules? He looked unbelievable. In some of those gym shots. I've seen some mm-hmm. of those shots. Beard? Yeah, yeah, great. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah he, he's right up there too with uh, Arnold as far as his, uh, you know. Yeah, he had very similar, uh, very similar pose. Right. Big right. rib cage, huge pecs, huge arms. These are big men. Yeah. yeah. He had the- uh, Louis and Arnold had those like, kind of what they call slab pecs, you know, look yeah, at slab yeah. beef on their, uh, which which surprised me because, like they said earlier, in between shows, Arnold's pecs would disappear. They'd be like, you know, yeah, Arnold, that, that was weird. That was I mean, really weird. I, I, the guy had those huge slab pecs, and then you know, four months later, there's nothing but nipples left. I mean, right. you know, <laughs> okay. yeah, you're right, Jerry, because when he retired after '75, yeah. I remember, you know, he was guest posing, and you could yeah. tell he was off everything. Because right. he was down to like 210, 215. Yeah. He had yeah. no pecs at all. It, it was yeah. totally flat. Yeah. Uh, you know, if we're talking about pecs alone, you, you definitely have to mention Serge Nobre, who had just the most. Yeah. yeah. Well, talk about. I mean, this is a guy who you can actually put the appellation beautiful physique. I mean, yeah. It, yeah. It's, it's hard to use the word beautiful in terms of a man. It usually goes with a woman. But this guy had this just beautiful physique, and his pecs were just so upper, lower, just perfect balance pectorals, you know? Yeah. But I don't think he had much of a rib cage, if I remember correctly, uh, Serge Nubre. Yeah, he really didn't. But I'll tell you, he, he really knew how to highlight that aesthetic physique. That's oh, true. He never, I mean, can, you, can you imagine yeah. Serge Nubre today doing what these guys do? <laughs> I mean, no, I mean <laughs> like, you couldn't even picture it. It would be oh. ridiculous. Serge oh. looked beautiful. Stand and relax. All he had to do is almost stand, relax, and twist the yep. hips the way he did and yep. flex. Arnold, statuesque. Nobody can do that. Arnold, no. told, Arnold told me once again, I, I know I keep breaking up Arnold, but Arnold told me once he said, standing relax, Serge Dubre beats everybody in the world, including me. That's what he said. Yeah. I said, I said, what happens when he starts posing, Arnold? He says, then he loses. <laughs> he, loses. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He did. <laughs> Just don't move. Stand relax. You'll right. win everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. So, are we going with Arnold on that one then? Is it pretty unanimous? I think Arnold. I'd go yeah. with Arnold on that side chest. Yeah. I'd go with Arnold on the side chest. I would too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all memorable. Yeah. And he, there's so many pictures of him hitting that pose that he looks amazing. I mean, there, I remember there was a picture when he was like 20. He looked unbelievable hitting that side oh, chest. Remember sure. that one, that black and white one? I, we do, yeah. I, I think we all do. I think we've all seen those photos of him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then the one with uh, Franco in the back. 
It had to be 74, 75. Oh, but he's standing looking like. Yeah. yeah right. right. That, that, <laughs> exactly. That, today, that pool freaks me out. That picture freaks me out. <laughs> right. That, that, that's it. That's the look. That's yeah. the look, man. Uh, Unbelievable. I love that. Okay, just just a quick notable real quick. I mean, some of those pictures out of, I mean, Phil, I know everybody, I mean, the pictures that came out of Gold's Gym at that time, Artie Zeller, some of the other stuff that was winding up and pumping iron, the book and yeah. stuff. Just how about the inspiration that that provided for all of oh, us? Oh, man. Is that on those black and whites? Yeah. Just Amazing. That's yeah. into our minds, man. Yeah. It's, it's today, yeah. it's still the ideal. It's 40, you know? 50 years later, and we still can remember every detail. Wow. Of the pictures. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Man, never forget them. Yeah. All right, let's go to uh, side triceps. Now, this was, I was trying to think of some good ones here. It's kind of a different kind of pose. Um, I thought Frank Zane had a good side tricep. Chris Dickerson had a really good side tricep. Ooh, I was going to mention, I didn't think yeah. you'd bring him up. Great call. Chris, yeah. I think uh, Serge Nubre, you know, he could have a good side tricep. Uh, Albert Beckles had a good side tricep. He did. Beautiful. And uh, Boyer Co. Those are mostly 70s guys. I, I can't, I'm sure there's some guys in the 80s that I'm probably passing over. Um, who was it you mentioned before, Jerry? Um, the, the, the younger, the, the guy with the biceps. What was it Larry Pretty, Scott and uh, Ortiz? Ortiz, yeah. yeah. Ortiz. A great side tricep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he did. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Arnold definitely is not on, in that one. He's not. Uh, no. No. I've seen I've seen some pictures of Arnold like from early like um, the one he lost to Chet Yorton and then when he competed against Dennis Tinarino in '67 he was doing the side tricep and it looked good he had yeah. a good side tricep I don't yeah. know why he didn't hit it later in his career as much sure that's a, you know it's this is a little tougher one to pick you know yeah it is because it's I'm not sure. uh, I'm thinking about Samir Benut you know because he had all those remember Phil he had all those striations straw striations I do. I yeah. mean, uh, and he had a he had a low tricep down to his elbow and uh, exactly yes. And although he didn't have the definition of the other guys, you got to mention uh, you know it's a little earlier, but I guess you could say seventy. Bill Pearl had a uh, oh, tremendous yeah. tricep development. It wasn't as defined as the others. Yeah. But, you know, the, the very you, you, you guys talk about the pictures inspiring. The uh, the thing that uh, that really got me into bodybuilding more than anything. I saw a picture of Bill Pearl. You guys might remember this. He's wearing a tank top and mm -hmm. it was, and it's showing his arm. And I, I, I had a, I was staring. I said, what is that? I've, <laughs> I've never seen a human arm. It looked like a side of ham hanging off his yeah. shoulder. Yeah. What, yeah. what the hell is that? And I remember the caption, it said, Bill Pearl has 21 and a half inch arms. 21 and a half inch arms? I said, that's as big as my leg. <laughs> and this guy became my idol right then and there. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. you know, I was actually originally inspired to train by Bill Pearl's triceps. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that picture distinctly. Yeah. It, it, it kind of looked like, well, Rick Valente's got a little bit of tricep oh, going yeah. on, too. Doesn't tremendous he? arms. Tremendous so like, arms. Quite a bit like that. Like the 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 Bill Pearl picture. To this day, his, his well, arms are still free. They're, they're still, still that big. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Rick, Phil, you and, Phil, you and Rick were pretty good. For, I, I I don't know how yeah. you guys are today, but but I remember no, I being back backstage with you at the Nationals helping sure. you out and stuff. And I was like, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah we've been friends for four. He got me my first job when I came to California. No kidding. Yeah, we we we, we don't we don't we haven't been in touch, but we follow each other on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see Rick every blue moon. Right. You know? Cool. I'm gonna have to throw him in there as one of the best triceps. Oh, he's one of the I, best. I, yeah. I, I, Rick, Rick Rick Valenti had a freakish tricep. It's really true. And I saw a picture of him just taken two days ago. He's back. He's at Gold's Gym. They opened up Gold. He still has a gigantic mm, Yeah, He still has it. Same. Yeah. Same. Huge. Yeah, I'm going to give you one more that okay. you might, guys might not think about. Muhammad Makawe. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. He had a yeah, he, tricep. Yeah. He had beautiful triceps. Yeah. yeah. God, what a great Every time he turned to the side, he'd always hit that tricep pose mm -hmm. in a three-quarter back. Yeah. And when kind he, of. He, when he had he, a lot of unique transition. poses. Yeah, when he did those transitions in his posing, he always emphasized those triceps. Yeah, unique poses that were, you know, not basic or standout, but I mean, they were so unique yeah. that he looked incredible. So yeah. he found out how to look the best in unique poses. But if you look at the basic standard poses from the back and from other, you know, maybe from the side, he wasn't that great. Yeah. But his triceps were tremendous. He had yeah. tremendous arms for a little guy. Yeah, yeah, he did. Lee Labrada had a great side tricep pose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Liam yeah. definitely had a great very aesthetic. Yeah, good good mass in his arm. He had big arms, totally, but uh, good abs from the side. You know, he had a good side tricep. Post. Yeah, exactly. yeah, there was a uh, there was a shot uh, taken not long ago. I think uh, Lee was probably in his um, in his fifties already, and 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 I, I just came across it recently. It's taken by Mike Nevue out in California. Of uh, and you know he's got his hair is much shorter. He's older. He's already successful yeah. with his his line, and is just showing that tricep with a t shirt on. And man, it looks freaking great. Veins. I mean, the guy looks fantastic. Looks yeah. great. Yeah. I was yeah. like, man, you still got it. Yeah, it's true. Well, but, it's what, about Chris, what about Chris Dickerson? He looked amazing in that. Chris had beautiful, yeah, beautiful triceps. He, he's the guy that's he's always criticized triceps. for having small arms, but I think that was more his biceps. But yeah, uh, yeah more his biceps, I would say. Yeah. 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 That, was a, that was a great pose for him. I remember that was always one of his best poses. Yeah, he did. Well, his legs too really enhanced everything yeah. from the side. Yeah. His legs, his mm-hmm. path, yeah, so good. But his arm definitely looked good from the side, big time. Yeah, yeah. this is a tough one, man. Yeah, that's yeah, a real tough one. That's a tough call. How about, how about Frank Zane? That was a great pose for him too. Very aesthetic and very pleasing. Yeah, with the triceps. Mm-hmm. He had great yeah. triceps too. We go to the classic look or freaky look. So you, that's that's the best. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking, well, yeah. you know, this guy was freakier. And, but this was more of a classic pose. Yeah. So, I mean, depending on the guy. Even uh, Samir, we got to go back to Samir. Samir, beautiful, yes. Yeah. Beautiful triceps. Great, and he knew how to hit that pose, man. He yeah. really, yeah. I mean, he brought it out. The, and again, the striations in the shoulder. I mean, triceps, just, delts, that pose. I mean, well, that, that, that pose, yeah. like you said, Tom, that pose, you've got to know how to hit it for your physique. Because mm. that, that's a pose that can look either bad or good, depending how you twist, you know, and how you show off you know, your strong point. You don't even have, sometimes I've seen guys with average triceps look good in that pose because they've got good intercostals and they could twist sure. right and their chest looks good in that pose. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Yeah. I don't know about anybody else, Phil. For me, I worked on that pose, like I can't even tell you, countless hours mm-hmm. of, of a little rotation here. Should I grab the two fingers or the three? Elbow yeah. out a little bit to bring out that rear delt. I mean, it was just right. fine tuning. Fine tuning yeah. The yeah. Little, fine that tuning. pose particularly, man. Yeah. yeah. That that wasn't one of my better poses, the side triceps. My triceps, my bice, I'm bicep dominant. Me too. Mm. And Me always too. have been. I never I never had to train my biceps. Yeah. But trying to get my triceps to catch up with what I didn't train with my biceps, but was hard to do. Yeah. Yeah, I remember for a few years I was I didn't train biceps all year until six weeks before the show. Yeah. Because they just grew from my back training, you know. Oh man. Yeah, absolutely. Your back, no wonder. But I remember uh, the last time I competed, I was 53. And I've noticed as I've gotten older, my triceps seem to, they're not as good. I mean, I've really got to work them hard just to maintain them. You know, yeah. my biceps are still there, but my triceps, I've really got to work them hard. So when I was competing that last time, when I did that tri- side tricep pose, I twisted so much, you couldn't see the tricep. <laughs> you just saw my <laughs> abs and my chest, you know. This I did the pose and I looked, it was a good pose. But my triceps were weak, but I just like twisted so much, I kind of pushed them out of the way, you know. I think I think part of that is as we get older, well, let, let's face it, the triceps play such a big role in the bench press, the incline, the dumbbell presses. Yeah. Yeah. As we get older, we start to use a little less weight. We're a little more cautious. We're not using the poundage. Yeah. So the tricep just tends to take a little bit of a back seat. I think it's not working yeah. as hard. Yeah. I'll tell you another thing I've noticed. I have extremely long arms. Mm-hmm. So the older you get. You know what happens, right? You're not going to carry that mass in the arms. My triceps are poor. Yeah. I train them hard, but I mean, just having long arms, longer than usual, I have a short torso and very long limbs. Mm. And it's yeah. hard to retain that mass once you get past 50. Yeah. Very difficult. Very true. By the way, I heard one, one other name. It goes way back, but most of you guys will probably remember this guy, Chuck Sipes. Oh yeah! Oh god! Yeah, yeah. sure. He had, a, he had a beautiful side tricep shot. I mean, I, I, I think he actually even had cross cuts in his tricep. You know, he, wow. he was really big on doing heavy bench presses. Heavy things. bencher, yeah. And, uh, his tricep, if you look at photos, uh, and it's, he had a great side tricep shot. Very good. Yeah, I remember That's reading nice. one of those um those old articles. I think it was the day before one of those Mr. Olympias where he competed. The day before at Mid City Gym, he yeah. worked out. And he did like a 505 bench for three reps or something. The day before the contest. Wow. <laughs> I saw Chuck Sipes. I was at Mid City Gym one year, you know, when he walked in. He walked into the gym and I recognized him right away from the magazines. 
And I, I you know, I kind of like admired the guy. Yeah. But I, I was, I, I was so intimidated by the guy, you know, that I, I was afraid to come up to him. I never said a word to him. And, and I heard he's a really nice guy, but I never got to know because, uh, yeah. but he was in great shape. He just walked in, you know, worked out. I didn't say a word oh, to him. He was always smiling. Every picture you see of Chuck Sykes, he was like, he never like deadly serious. But right. he does look like a guy. He, look, he looks like an iron worker. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, yeah. like a tough guy. Yeah. He's like tough looking tough. guy, man. Outdoorsman or something. Yeah. Yeah. This guy used to like climb trees and go in the woods and all that. That's what he looks like. He looks like <laughs> yeah. that kind of guy. <laughs> he was like a so called man's man type of thing. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I remember reading that he committed suicide. Does any do, do, oh, did you know yeah, that, Jerry? Too. Yeah, that's what I heard too. Yeah. Okay. Well, Chuck Sipes had a real problem with depression. Mm. Depression. And the story I heard was that you know he apparently you know left his wife and kids for some other woman, and you know the kids didn't want to talk to him and this and that, and he was already depressed to begin with, and it just got too much for him. He wound up killing himself. That's what mm. I heard. Well, Steve Mahalik went that same round. That was sad. Mm -hmm. yeah. that I didn't know that. Ago. Steve Mahalik killed himself, uh, yeah. Tom? A couple of years yeah. ago, yeah. I didn't know he did. I didn't know what he died of. I remember yep. Steve Mahalik coming up to me also in, in the gym, and he was talking. He was absolutely madly in love with his wife, whose name I don't remember. Uh, but I remember him telling me something about how, you know, she was going to leave him. He had a little kid with her. And he said, you know, uh, he was telling me how it hit him so hard that he had to go into shock therapy. He says he could not function. He yeah. had to go shock. He says he, he just lost it completely. He said, Jerry, I completely lost my mind. Wow. And, and I really felt, I felt so bad for the guy, you know, when he was telling me this story, you know, because now he was back working out and stuff. And when I heard that he killed himself, I wasn't that surprised because I remembered that conversation I had with him. You know? Yeah, it was it was interesting. He went to work with uh, John Defendez down in Florida right. for a while. Right. Him and John were like that that uh, intensity or insanity team. You yeah. know, they would remember that. Like, yes. Mad <laughs> well, well, you know, you know, Steve had a gym in Long Island where he trained. Yeah. And this is America's gym. Yeah. 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 He do these crazy things like 70, 80 sets of you know. <laughs> oh, he. I, I I was sort of I had I it was like two factions. One was Future Man. It was Tony Pandolfo. I don't know if anybody remembers yeah. Tony yeah. Pandolfo. Absolutely a great champion. He became my mentor, and he owned a gym called Future Man. Right. And on the, across town was Mr. American, Steve Mahalik's gym. And uh, and Future Man was sort of like to settle down. There was no talk of drugs. There was any none of that stuff. And Mahalik's was like the opposite. You walked <laughs> in and you signed in with a syringe. That's just it. And it was about upping the dosage. It was always about upping the dosage. Yeah, yeah. And it was I'll tell you a funny story. I'll, I'll never forget this. I used to talk to Bob Gruskin. Oh, yeah. Bob. Yeah. Right? And we, were, yeah. we became friends when I was a teenager. After the 78 Teenage Mr. America, mm. he, we started calling each other. He called me. I'd call him. And he told me that he goes, they were back then, supposedly, and I wouldn't think he lied, taking over 1,000 milligrams a week of tests, this and that. And I'm thinking, well, no, nobody could do that. They would die. You would die. Yeah. <laughs> right? That was unheard of back then. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think he was doing it, man. Well, there, it's doing back, it. uh, one of one of Halleck's protégés, his name I don't remember offhand. This guy had very big arms too. But he, you know, Mahalik, I guess, coached him on the drugs too. This guy was like 21 years old and completely lost his hair. I know who you're talking about. You're talking about Andy Lopadoti. I competed against Andy. Yeah. yeah, Andy was good. He could have yeah. been great. He was a monster. Yeah, well, yeah. He, he was completely bald. He lost all his hair from the. You know, I guess he didn't know the drugs do that. You know? In his early twenties, though. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, right, right. You know, Jeez. in the '79 Teenage Mister America, where Lee Haney won, I beat Lee four months earlier. Wow. And then at the Teenage America, I'm going there, and I'm thinking, okay, there's Doug Brignol. Mm. I knew who he was. Frank Pantoja. I knew who he was. There's two California kids, one's from Bill Pearls, one's training under Roy Liedermeyer, and then the two from New York is Andy Lopadoti and Joe Fulco. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm I thinking, them both. well, yeah. yeah. And I saw Andy had a sweatsuit on, and there was veins sticking oh, through the his arms. sweatsuit. Oh, the arms. He had some arms, didn't he? Is a teenager? <laughs> you like, yeah, you, yeah. Oh, my God. Hey, do you guys remember when uh, Steve Mahalik took out a notarized statement in Iron Man? Saying that he never used drugs of any kind. <laughs> oh, that, that, that was the biggest laughing stock in bodybuilding. Every, 
<laughs> everybody knew. Everybody in bodybuilding knew that Steve yeah. was one of the biggest. Yeah. And, and to, I can't understand to this day why he did that. It made no sense yeah. at all. No, really. no. Why call attention to it? You know, it's like, right. Right. I don't want to mention names, but it's like there's a current guy who, you know, who's uh, so called nat, you know, he claims to be natural. Nobody believes him. He's like 55 years old. You guys already know I'm talking about. I know who you're talking about. Yes. <laughs> this, guy, this, guy, this guy who's also, you know, he's, he's a friend of mine too. I mean, we're not close, but I, you know, I, I like the guy personally, but this guy gets better as he gets older. And as you were saying earlier, when you get past 50, things usually start going backwards. Right. This right. guy yeah. is getting better and he swears he doesn't use anything. And, right. But but here's the thing. Nobody believes him. Nobody. <laughs> Nobody. Nobody, Nobody believes in their right him. mind, anyway. Right. Right. It doesn't matter, Jerry. He's making money and he's popular. And <laughs> I, 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 I've, actually, I've actually been attacked online because I stick up for the guy. You know, what I say is this. I say, look, I said, he could be what they call an outlier. He, you know, I, I know, listen, I know this guy is phenomenally strong. He is. He's really strong. I mean, heavy benches, heavy squats. I said, you know, he could be one of these freakish guys. And, uh, and and unless you've seen him, as I'm writing this, I'm feeling stupid even writing this. As, you know, as Unless you've seen him using the drugs, you can't accuse him. Boy, did they fucking... Oh, 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 oh. I said to myself, I'm never going to defend this guy again. That was a yeah. Uh, <laughs> Jerry, don't you, uh, hey, Jerry, don't you think even if he is an outlier, you still don't get better after 50 than you were at 30? You know? <laughs> very, very unlikely. You're lucky if you could just hold on to I mean, a little bit of it. You know? I mean, yeah. you can look at like Arnold, uh, yeah. Lee, yeah. uh, Ronnie Coleman. These are all genetic freaks. Nobody yeah. gets better after 50. Tom, hey, you, know, you know, there are two – I'm sorry, Jerry. There are two guys that, that, that I feel – bad about not mentioning because they were both of them became sort of like amateur le uh, uh, legends they never turned pro oh yeah. one of them we just mentioned and you guys i bet you guys know who they are both competed in the nationals at the highest level one Bridget 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 Haney. i think maybe the other did as well i, I can guess i know what, what you're think? talking about i'm gonna say rory Ledermeyer and matt mendenhall but That's maybe exactly i'm wrong right yeah, exactly who I'm thinking about. Yeah. And yep. they were both, I mean, either one, Rory Liedemeyer or Sacha, talk about aesthetics. Yeah. Right that's, up that's, there a, that's a side tricep right there. Yeah. Rory Liedemeyer. Yeah. Very yeah. true. Rory had a great side tricep. Great side tricep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, yeah, Rory, what a look. And you know, yeah. not only that, Tom, you know, I don't know if you remember, Rory was one of the first guys to have that great leg bicep from the side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I used to joke with Rory because he was training guys like Bob Paris and, and some of these other guys, his name I don't remember. They all, every time you see them uh, uh, in a contest, when they did the side pose, they all had that bulging leg bicep. Yeah. I, to Rory, I can always tell a guy that you train, Rory, because they have those huge leg biceps that stand mm -hmm. out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he says, you know, I make them do a lot of sets, leg curls and all that stuff, you know? Yeah. Rory was another strong SOB. Still yeah. Top, yeah. 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 God, that guy was strong. Oh, he still trains hard. Rory still trains sure. hard. Yeah. You know, still yeah. Good Remember player. John Arnita? That was one of the guys I was trying to think of. That was one of his protégés. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Frank Pantoja, right? Like you said, Phil, he was training under Rory. Frank Pantoja. Yeah. He looked like Frank Zane, a very similar Zane type physique. And he yeah. won the like he won the middleweight that year that Lee won the overall. Frank yeah. Pantoja. So he beat Doug Brigno, uh Joe, and Andy. And I was fifth. I ended up in fifth place. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> My God, you know, I mean, we can't, you can't talk about the 70s and 80s without this. There's just so many. Yeah. There's just so yeah. many guys, you know, that were so good. It was, I mean, those two guys, Moses Maldonado, I'm sure you remember Moses. Yeah. Maldonado. Oh, whatever happened to Moses? Uh, he, well, he won the light heavyweights. Right. The world. Lost. Didn't yes. win, came back to win the, instead of turning pro, Came back to win the nationals again, and uh, unfortunately, I was there, and so was JJ Marsh and some of the others, oh, and yeah. it just he couldn't pull it off again. And yeah. I just Gaspari, yeah. beat him too. When Gaspari won, he got second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The, last, the last I heard of Moses, he was leading the Israelites across the Red Sea. I, I don't know. <laughs> <That's possible. laughs> I tell you what, Moses, and this isn't disparaging. This is the game. This is the game of of psychology and and sports psychology. And I remember, I remember the, the, I guess it was the year you won, Phil. 
Yeah. He's 85. Moses was in that. I think yes. he took third. I was second. You and were second. JJ was third. JJ was, was third. Fourth. Moses was fourth. I believe. And fourth. I remember. I remember. I mean, literally, I'm going into this thing because I remember you and I. Do you remember? I, I, I hate to diverge, but I have to. I don't get a chance to chat with Phil too often about reminiscing right. about that experience because it was a great experience. I remember you and I were called out like a, like once or twice, and then that was it. We were never called out again. Called we out again. We stood else. in the background and just waited. That's right. I'm judging well, to then, finish for so our class. Like, so it was like, it was like, I, and no one, neither one of us really knew. I mean, we had some ideas where, you know, we both thought we had it. You thought you had sure. it. Right? And, and I'm literally pumping. It was the night show, getting ready to do my routine, which I worked long and hard on, right? Getting oiled up and stuff. Oh, Moses yeah. comes up. She said, hey, you really look good. Congratulations. You know, you're in, you're up in there. You know, he goes, unfortunately, I spoke to the judges. You're second. <laughs> this is just before I'm ready to go out. Unbelievable. I'm like, you son of a bitch. Oh, uh, <laughs> you did your routine, right? I'm oh, like, all right, wow. shake it off. Shake it off. Maybe he's wrong. Maybe he's just trying to psych me out, you know? Wow. Sure, oh, he was right. But oh, the game, the game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. I remember that well. I went right behind you in the, in the free round. Mm. Posing round. You yeah, went out before right. me and I watched you and you're done. I went, oh. Oh, I got to follow this. <laughs> That's exactly how I felt with you, man. <laughs> you, guys, you guys were both awesome posers. Yeah. I mean, I was asking my my girlfriend and my training partner at the time. I'm like, what do you think? What do you think? And they're like, we don't know, man. The guy's got a back. He's got an incredible back. You know, like, uh, anyway, I remember this. So I'm sorry about that. No, that's it's, it's good conversation. It's fun. Yeah. We never had a chance to discuss. We never had a chance to talk about it. No, yeah. we didn't. Yeah. It was such a never mutual had. experience, you know. Yeah. It was it was cool. I remember the pump up room. I'm like glancing over at you and you're like, all right. And you're working with, you know, you know, Rick's helping you out. And it's just it was just such a great experience, man. Yeah. And again, it's uh you pulled the best out of me, and I hope I inspired you in doing You did. Oh, but for my friend, you kept me awake for months. <laughs> <laughs> And I kid you not when I say that you kept me awake for months. Wow. There was nights I couldn't sleep where I'd sit in a chair and I just, I don't know. I just, I, I just couldn't sleep. I had anxiety from it, I guess. <laughs> I love it, man. My training partner with Phil Williams, Phil Williams training harder than you right now. He's out in LA. He's doing, he's, he's squatting twice as much weight as you. I'm like, right. oh, God, all right. All right. <laughs> Wasn't that great though? Before social media, we, we just imagined what the other guy was doing or imagine mm -hmm. what the guy was, how he was training or how he looked, you know? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I, re I remember distinctly. It was, uh, it was about two months, about eight, 10 weeks out from the contest from the nationals that year. And uh, my very dear friend, Randy, uh, who, who, a gal, she was my brother's girlfriend, my twin brother's girlfriend. And she had just come back from California. She was training at a gold's gym. And um, she comes back, we're, we're on the beach. She joins me on the beach, I'm laying there. She's like, how's your training going? I'm like, good, it's going great. I feel great, man. She goes, and she's looking me up and down. She goes, yeah, you look pretty good. She goes, but I just got back from Gold's Gym and I saw Phil Williams training. And she says, you got some work to do. <laughs> I'm like, oh man, thanks. I appreciate the brutal honesty. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so you, she said exactly that. She's, you got some work to do. <laughs> wow. Oh yeah, man, that was inspiring. Anyway, all right, so let's let's vote. What do you think, guys? Phil, what do you think? Side tricep. Oh, side tricep. Oh, geez, I'm gonna. You know what? I saw Samir hit the side tricep in front of me, and I was shocked. So I'm gonna go with Samir. Okay. Mm. I'm gonna go with Samir. Jerry, what do you think? I have to agree with Phil. I'm gonna because I also saw Samir when he was training for the Olympia the year that he won. I saw him quite a bit, and uh, like I said. I, I never, before him, I don't think I ever saw crust striations like that all over right. the track. And it, it just looked like something from out of space. So, you know, I, I, and he had all three heads fully developed. I'm going to go with Samir with the side tricep. Yeah. Okay. How about you, Tom? Uh, I think I'm going to have to agree. Francis Benfato, I love his side tricep. I would even, and if you get a chance to talk to Rick, um, Phil, let him know that I had him right up in there in the top three. I agree, I agree with that, though. I you know? agree with that. Yep. Yeah, I, and, agree with uh, that I would go with Samir as, as a, an overall polished wow. side tricep Samir. Yeah, for sure. Okay. I'm going to go with, um, I'm, I'm either thinking Zane, McAway, or Rory, now that we brought up Rory. Ooh, Rory. Uh, <laughs> so 
so good, man. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna go with Roy Lidlmeyer. I think just the overall look, he had that small waist, the way he did the pose, you know, yeah. the whole picture. I'm gonna go with him. But I'd love to see those two side by side to make yeah. a decision. But yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it's a tough one to call. It really is, you know. Yeah. Well, see, you know, boy and call. I, I was thinking, to me, it'd be a close runner up to Samir. But besides Trice, the boy had a tremendous, and even Chris yeah. Nickerson. Chris had a. Chris had a great one. Yeah. Standing side tricep, so it's a real tough one to call. Yeah. I only, I go with Samir because to me, like Phil mentioned, he had this like freaky tricep that nobody else had, you know. So I, that's why I went with Samir. Yeah, he, just, he had this appearance, and I never saw him anyone. Yeah. All right, let's go. Wait, with, wait, wait, uh, wait, wait! I got to throw somebody else in there real quick okay. before we finalize it. <laughs> How many of you remember seeing um, Andreas Munzer's side oh. tricep? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. I mean, you talk about shredded oh, cross yeah. striations. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, everything, not just the side tricep. Months that, of, as oh, far as striations months are concerned, freaky. Yeah, yeah. He, he was in the nineties, though. I think. I'm still going with. I'm still going with Samir. Okay. <laughs> God rest his soul, Andre. If, if it was the nineties, John. I would actually put. Uh, I would agree with. I would put months of first in the side tricep from the nineties. Yeah. I saw, again. I. I knew Munster and I interviewed him. I saw him up close. Again, just even oh. if, if you talk about defined, he actually beat Samir with that. I mean, he had, it looked like he had no skin. He had his, no, unbelievable. no photo does this guy justice. You had to see him standing. Uh, yeah, but, but. I, I mean, I, and I, and I, I always, I, I wrote this recently because, you know, you have a lot of guys today going around like, <laughs> what's his name? Uh, uh, Ronnie Coleman. He said in an interview that he was 0.03 percent. I think first of all, first of all, that's incompatible with life, right? <laughs> Second of all, him, him being that level of body fat, weighing 290 pounds, is about as possible as winning the Powerball lottery 15 times in a row. By the <laughs> but, but the thing that got the thing that I pointed out to show how ludicrous that was, and I'm I'm not trying to put down Ronnie. I'm sure somebody told him this and, you know, whatever. But when I interviewed Andreas Munzer, I asked him, did you ever have your body fat measured? He says, yeah. He says, and I said, what was he? He says, 5%. And I'm thinking, if this guy's 5%, yeah. what are the other guys who are claiming 3% or less? He's 20, right. 10 times more cut than them. Right. They're liars. I, I had never seen anyone. When I saw him in, uh, backstage at the Olympia, I was dumbfounded. I was like, holy crap, his leg. He was doing a leg shot in the mirror, and I was like, good God. <laughs> just, I'm telling you, it was like cellophane. Yeah. Just, and, and if he was 5%, but again, he knew how to dry. That was one of the things that caught his life. He knew That's, how to dry yeah. out so tight. He became so tight. It was this incredible. No, no water, water under the skin at all. No water at all. That's right. You know? exactly. Yeah, none. Right. You know? I do all want right. to point out one last thing before we – and then we're moving on, but – <laughs> but I, I find it hard to believe that we haven't talked about Ronnie Coleman until this moment. Well, he, he's a, he's a nineties too. Though. Well, he's a nineties. There you go. Yeah, he, I guess he was, well, he was competing in the eighties, but he wasn't that good in the eighties. No, right? no. When did no. he win his first Olympia? 98. Yeah. It was 98. So was that? Okay. Yeah. Right. Hey, Tom, in his, I think one of his first Olympia appearances, he placed 16th. Right. Yes. He was yeah. Last. Yeah. And like three years later, he won. He, I, he, I beat him at Night of the Champions. No one knew who he was. No, he was no. just in the background. You know what I mean? He, he didn't even look like the same guy, quite honestly. And you guys remember there were two Ronnie Coleman's going on at the same time. That's right. I, that's, yeah. 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 Was, I was very confused about which Ronnie Coleman it was. Yeah. yeah. One was Ronald Coleman and one was Ronnie Coleman. Right, yeah. right. Now, Ronnie won the World Championships in what? What year was that? 91. That must have been 92? 91. 91. 91. And supposedly, and I believe it when you look at him before and after, he was clean when he actually yeah. won that show because that was a drug tested show. I think he only okay. weighed like 212 pounds. Oh, sure. So they that's what I love. So I, 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 I met him at that. That's when I met Ronnie Coleman. Yeah, we talked about that, Jerry. Yeah. Yeah, right after we won the world. And I, I asked him, I said, What do you think about drugs? He says, I don't use any. He said, he, he, I, I, I don't use any drugs at all. And I'm looking at it, I'm thinking, is this guy a liar? What's going on? He looks, I mean, how do you look that good without drugs? He, Trans, wasn't, bro. he wasn't that big, but he still looked pretty good, you know? Yeah, incredible, incredible and shape. And, incredible and he tells shape. you that famous story he always tells, how he walked into this gym in Texas. I think he was a football player, and they never lifted, didn't lift weights at all. 
And the guy took one look at him and said, I'll give you a free membership if you start training for bodybuilding. Because he already had a bodybuilder's physique when he joined mm. the gym. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's right. People don't that's... realize that about Ronnie Coleman. Sure, he used drugs later on, but this guy had just tremendous genetics. He said yeah. to himself, for bodybuilding, and he was just super responsive. I think he was lifting weights, though, I think he was doing powerlifting in high school. Oh, powerlifting, yes. Yeah. Uh, powerlifting. But he never really did. Like, he wasn't a bodybuilder, though, no. Not a bodybuilder, right. Yeah. You're right. You're right, John. That's true. Yeah. Mm.